Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up some classic horrors of Zinch. And guess what? They're metal! <laughs> Man, I haven't done a pewter model in a while. And interestingly enough, these models are not remakes. These are originals from 2001. They just seem to be holding around doing nothing. Dang it, these things are older than some of my audience. Shoot. 22 years old now. Well, anyway, as far as these models goes, I'm actually going to show the process of well, fixing them, uh, using metal clips and stuff to remove all the excess flash, and I remember why these were always so irritating. There's tons of little bits of flash everywhere, and I kept finding them left and right and having to click and or clip them off. They're on their nails, on any pointy bits, or sometimes for some reason randomly in the middle of sections. Then there are these parts I had to sand down pretty smooth, or at least what I thought was smooth until later and I saw it, it wasn't as smooth as I thought it would be. And assembly was a bit difficult. I couldn't just super glue these together, I had to make some green stuff and put little drops of it inside each arm piece so they would glue together. Well, so it would become flushed. Once it was super glued and the stuff was kind of dry, then took a knife and sometimes a sander and sanded the, or cut off the excess of the green putty from each of their joints. Not only that, there was no instruction manual with this, so interestingly, um, these models, how do I put it, uh, you could mix and match any of the arms and stuff. And in some cases, uh, the horns, uh, you couldn't really tell which one had it, until you look closely. And after that as well, interestingly enough, uh, I, in the future I also had to go back and cut off some stuff after I painted a little bit because I just, I couldn't find it then. It was a lot of hide and go seek trying to find all the flash. And, couldn't find them all. And by the way, I paid $38 for these five, and I distinctly remember these guys were $23.50 for a pack of five. I had 30 of them at one time before I sold that army. And now with Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer, I'm going to prime them. Now, because of the, the way their feet are attached, I'm attaching them to their bases as well, uh, super gluing them in and such, and so I'm going to prime them uh, all together. Uh, this was a bit harder to do. I should have primed them on their side because I missed some stuff and I had to go back a bit later afterwards because the way their models were built are some places that just like did not get primed because they're weird architecture and they look pretty okay now. And here are all the paints used for this model kit. Some ended up being redundant and some were... Eh, it's a blend. These old models have details that don't exist, so you want to, if you want to bring them to the next level, you have to create your own details. So some steps were redundant because they didn't really work out too well. Well, now knowing what I know, so. All right, now with pre-coating, with Eschen Gray, Gray Sear, and White Scar White, we're going to do the pre-coating for the models. Now, uh, I forgot to get uh, the White Scar White dry brushing fiber. Basically, paint the whole thing Eschen Gray, then with an the airbrush, uh, spray down with Gray Sear to create light and dark values. And I forgot to record the step of the uh, white scar white, where I basically just dry brush lightly all over to pick out some details a little more. Alright then, with Emperor's Children, Gene Stealer Purple, Magos Purple, and Lamian Medium, which I need to pick up some more of, I um, painted, this, well, my bubblegum troops. So here's basically what I mixed Emperor's Children like two brushes to three drops of Lamian. That's my ratio. You're going to have to find your own because you don't have my brushes or droppers. And essentially what I did was I applied this, it became a wash, and I applied it onto their whole bodies. And then I did the same ratio with Gene Sealer Purple and I applied it onto their hands and feet. So they basically are pink bodies and purplish hands and feet. Once that was done, I took Magos Purple, uh, diluted with Lamian Medium. The Lamian Medium makes the Magos Purple flow better. It's less concentrated. It like fixes it a bit. And then I applied this lightly, a thin layer of Magos Purple all over the models. And once that was done, I went back with uh, Emperor's Children and like re and Gene Sealer Purple and re-highlighted their appropriate parts. The pink on the body, the purple on the hands. And I did this process like twice, where I applied color, added wash for depth, applied color for highlight, applied wash for depth, and then applied color.
All right, so what I tried to do then was to create some more highlights. So I took the Pure Emperors and Gene Sealer Purple, and so basically what I did was I took it with a water down with a, a brush, and I just did taps. Uh, taps all over the places where I would want to highlight. Essentially the idea was to create an uneven surface of colors to make it look like it sort of had a texture, like some more detail. Basically like a, he had spots, essentially. And at a distance it would kind of add like something extra to the model. And it sort of worked a little. You wanted to do less than more. In some places it kind of worked, some other places it didn't. And so I did one coat, uh, very thin down with water, and then I applied a slightly thicker one on the most raised areas to catch the eyes. And then I did one coat of it with the purple because, like, uh, it really wasn't that much darker, so it was harder to see it. In the end, it added a little bit of color smoothing to it, but because uh, basically I had pink on top of pink and stuff, it really didn't show as well as it could have. I probably should have had the pink horror be a darker color and then applied the pink and then it would have been more obvious. I didn't want to make it more white or like add lighter color to it. I want it to be pink. So I shot myself in the foot there. All right, with Wild Rider Red and Magos Purple, I paint their mouths. I'm just gonna do something simple. I paint their mouths Wild Rider Red. I already did that. And then I applied two coats of Magos Purple Pure. I didn't use the Lamian Medium. And it worked out. Alright, with Uriel Yellow, Averland Sunset, Troll Slayer Orange, Mephiston Red, and Corn Red, we're going to paint Fire. I could have used an airbrush for this, but I kind of want to do mostly old school stuff <laughs> to get it right, uh, just for these models. And so with Uriel Yellow, I start off with there and I paint all the fires that they have. And basically then I cover 90% of that with Averland Sunset. Then I cover 90% of the Averland with Troll Slayer Orange. Then I do the same thing with Mephiston Red and Corn Red on the very tips and stuff. And so it goes from bright yellow to a dark red. And it's okay. It works. Alright, now with Magos Purple, Emperor's Children, we're going to paint their tongues. I wanted to differentiate it from the rest of their body and to be a different color than their mouths, but I couldn't think of anything else other than pink. So basically, I painted their tongues pink, then I applied Magos Purple Pure on there, very dark and a bit uneven. Then I painted stripes all along their tongues. Then I reapplied Magos Purple with a little bit of water to dilute it. Then I reapplied stripes again, and then I re-added Magos Purple, and I did this until I was satisfied. And they got like a striped tongue. Alright, with Mornfang Brown, Baylor Brown, and Ushab T-Bone, we're going to paint the teeth. So we're going to start off with a layer of Mornfang Brown to be the depths in it. Then we're going to paint each individual tooth with Baylor Brown. And then we're going to do the tip of each tooth with Ushab T-Bone. And this is a bit challenging to do because there are a lot of flaws in the pewter, and it's kind of hard to... <laughs> It's hard to take this model kit seriously. I, like, I can't really be upset if things are not looking too good because the models themselves do not look good. And now with Gorthor Brown and Ushab T-Bone, we're going to paint the nails. Basically, paint their nail Gorthor Brown and then paint the top part of the nail and tip with Ushab T-Bone. Uh, because these things are so small, a high contrast will make them stand out more rather than something subtle colors. And also... Uh, there's a lot of the nails that are just terrible, especially towards the feet and stuff. If there are any hands or stuff there, nails are just flat round cylinders, so making the most of what I have. And with Gulliman Flesh and Ushab T Bone, I'm going to paint their eyes. So with Gulliman Flesh, I apply this with really terrible camera focus into their eyes. The liquid basically helps uh, fall in and makes it work right. This creates the shadow. And I can't show you it how I did it, but basically I took a very fine brush and with very little paint on it, uh, not super wet, not super loaded, I just did little taps on the eyes until it would work. Uh, I had to do, hold this like right close to my face and so I couldn't really show how I did it on camera, but that's how I did it. Alright, so with Liquitex Modeling Putty, I'm going to do a little thing on the base. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it, in real time when I'm doing this, it's like towards the night, so I'm about to close up for the night, and so I'm just going to apply this layer on there, and essentially what's going to happen is it's going to dry overnight, so you know what happens. So because there are these gaps in between where I place the metal part of their base into the plastic part of the base, there's this little gap, and it might look bad. 
so I just fill it up with the modeling putty. Then, night passes and the next day, I'm going to apply snow onto their bases because sand is too thick, but this snow is much thinner and finer, and since many of their body parts are like flat onto the ground there and it would obscure their detail, I wanted a thinner, flatter terrain thing. So I yeah, use modeling, or not was it, gel glue to attach this. And then with Liquitex matte varnish, I then drop this in with a little dropper and then push it around with a brush, and this basically seals in all the snow. All right, with Steel Legion Drap, Bane Blade Round, and Karak Stone, I'm gonna paint the horns that two of the guys have. So I start off by layering the whole horn with Steel Legion Drap. Then I layer, layer half of the horn, the front half, with Bane Blade Brown. Maybe the other way, I don't know, I don't remember how GW does the color grading on it. But then afterwards, I take Karak Stone with a fine brush, I paint lines from the base of the horn all the way to the tip. Now, how I figured to do this better is to paint like, if you take the horn, paint like the north, south, east, and west sides of the horn, as best you can, because they curve. And then, do the in-between each line. And then you create this nice, fine line horn. Actually, now that I remembered, I think GW has a darker color towards the tip. And then I just paint the little tips with the Carrick Stone to finish it off, and it looks pretty decent, actually. Alright, with Grace here, Fenrisian Grey, Druchi Violet, and Coella Green Shade, we're going to paint the bases. Now, I'll just explain what I did. So basically, I took Grace here, painted the snow completely a grayish white like this. Then I took Fenrisian Grey, watered it down a lot, and I covered it over the entire thing. Alright, then what I did was I took water, very watered down, very, very watered down, Druchi Violet, and Coella Green Shade, and basically, I applied it all over the base, the Druchi Violet all over, let it dry, applied like streams of it, I painted like little rivers of it here and there, maybe applied a little more, let it be dark in some areas, and applied a whole layer of a Coella Green Shade. These are very watered down by the way, very transparent. Then applied like little patches of it, little rivers of there, maybe went back with some Druchi Violet to add color, and then with some less watered down Druchi Violet, painted the edges of the circles and stuff. So basically where I got this idea was from, I was like, what is the realm of Zinch like? So I went and just looked up a video of Total Warhammer 3 Zinch's realm. Then I saw the ground and what it looked like, and it had these colors, or as close as I could get. And I was like, alright, I'll copy that. And so this is more of like an artistic, back and forth, bright stone, purple stone, greenish, bluish, blue, a good amount of blue and stuff. And so it was just amusing of colors and stuff, and it kind of worked. Alright, with AK Interactive Matte Varnish, I then varnish the entire models. And that's pretty much it. And of course, I also base them as well. Uh, I just base them with uh, Corvus Black to help and, uh, accentuate the base. And they are done. Well, they are done. And an interesting model kit, because they are super plain, and I could have done these in probably less than an hour. <laughs> I wanted to bring out more detail and make them better. A lot of it was wasted time though. Um, what I could have done to make them seem more textured and stuff, and so basically on the body and stuff have a darker pink and the hands a um, darker purple, which I did have. And then when I did the stipling or padding on them to add a lighter color, it would have shown more and be better. Instead, their colors are not s technically smooth or uniform, but Eh, it kind of adds to it. Now these models are a bit interesting. I kept having to find places where there was flash that I missed and so I cut it off and I had to repaint the small area. That took a bit. It's just hard to... I can't really take these models seriously because there's a lot of imperfections and issues in them and so I just accept them as is. I like the aesthetic. I like the demeanor of these models. I like how they are. I really wish they would have been like in plastic or rebrought with the same kind of method in plastic. The current models have a different aesthetic and appearance that I just, I just don't like. These ones feel more, I don't know, how do I put it, animalistic. Yeah, it's hard to put down, but I like the overall design and temperament of these models better. Although I wish they were in plastic, not res or not pewter, because the uh, there's a lot of trouble trying to build them, and there's a lot of imperfections. It's just some parts are just bad. Their teeth are not uniform. I had to make the most of it. Uh, other stuff like that. Assembly was also an issue. 
uh, how really bad the fingers and toes were on some of the models. Yeah. So that was interesting. I'll keep this in my personal collection. So like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, and more to come. Hopefully, something a bit different next time. Bye.